We have Mile campaign here with us, the organizer of World uh, of uh, London Classic, and also the member of appeal committee here during this World uh, Rapid and Blitz Championship. Malcolm, first of all, what is your role here as an organizer of this event? Well, I'm not organizing it really, but I was involved in the initial discussions with the General Sports Authority uh, when they contacted FIDE and said that they wanted to meet some people in London. Uh, Jeffrey Borg invited me to come along to the meetings. I mean, I was there only really to discuss what is chess, what tournament we might run in Saudi Arabia, uh, maybe some development ideas and also the questions of prize funds and conditions for players and those sorts of things. So I was involved in that at, at an early stage, but uh, after one day my involvement was ended and I just hoped that it would happen. Yeah, are you happy with the result, actually? Well, I'm happy with, uh, with most of the results. Uh, I think it's a shame that one country's players are not here represented. It's something that has to be fixed. Uh, but it's good that the Qatari players are here and the Iranians were offered visas. I think that's a very positive message. But, you know, it's uh, Gen Zuna Summers, not Gen's, uh, you know, Gen's Dua Summers. So uh, we need to make sure that, that, that that's fixed next time. But it, it's a wonderful tournament. It's a fantastic venue. The hospitality has been, I think, tremendous. Playing conditions are first class. And also what I'm very pleased about is it's bringing chess to a country that didn't really have very much chess. Indeed, you know, it's only a few years ago that chess was ruled inadmissible by some of the religious authorities here, and yet somehow it still continued on a low level. And it's quite obvious from the way we've got so many people coming here from the public uh, that, that it's really captured the imagination of people in the country. It's all over the media, everywhere. Uh, and also we've discovered that there are quite few chess fans here anyway. You know, it was very nice to see uh, what one of the local players come up to Peter Spidler yesterday and say, you know, I love watching your banter blitz and all this sort of thing. And I'm sure Peter was quite surprised. You know, I've got fans in Saudi Arabia even, you know. So that, that's particularly nice. I think it's really positive changes. And do, do you believe that chess will be developed in the future because of this event? This is like a start for development uh, in chess in the country. Yes, I mean, I've been speaking to one or two people about doing chess in schools here. But what I'm actually particularly keen to do is to try and introduce the ancient Arabic form of chess. Because it's chess, a slightly different form of chess called shatranj, but actually it's still the word they use in Arabic for chess even now, was played, uh, you know, in the 9th century. And several of the famous caliphs played, played chess, and there were chess puzzles, and there were great players, there was some literature, and then it died completely. And I think it, one of the things I'd like to do is bring this back because I think that people would really love the idea that there was originally a form of chess in the Arab world that was uniquely Arab and, ha and, and had its own history and, 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 and structure. So I think next year we must do something with that. But you are, let's say, representing classic chess. Yes. <laughs> yes, I mean, at the moment, all the money's being put into classic chess. But who knows? Maybe we could have a sh an Arabic Shatranj chess tournament alongside it next time as well, you know? Would be nice. But first, of course, we've got to teach people how to play those rules because it's slightly different yeah for sure uh, that's a good idea i think and uh, i support it also uh, what i would like to ask you what is more difficult actually to be the organizer of the tournament or to be a member of the appeal committee <laughs> well of course the appeals committee is traditionally a bit of a joke isn't it that really whoever is invited along to do the appeal appeals committee is just meant to be sitting around and not doing very much but this time it was an exception right well you know we actually had to do some work this afternoon because we had an appeal um, and a, a very interesting appeal actually in a way. It was in the game uh, Carlsen against Inakiev. Uh, so um, Inakiev, uh, just to look at the chess for a moment, Inakiev blundered in a pretty equal position and Magnus played a very strong move which was rook takes b7 which was check and it was checked to the king on b6. And you'd imagine with a rook on b7 and a king on b6, it would be pretty hard to miss. But this is blitz, right? And Inakiev responded by checking Magnus's king. And Magnus, just in the heat of the, of the battle, forgot that he had put Inakiev in check last move and immediately moved his king. So Magnus could have claimed the game, but he didn't. Now at this point, uh, Inakiev stopped the clock and he claimed the game. <laughs> very interesting basis for his claim. Absolutely. <laughs> what he said was, well, look, it's an illegal position. My king is in check. Uh, Magnus is a king is in check as well, of course. And Magnus has just made a move. So therefore, how can this move be legal? <laughs> and I have to say, when, he, when I first thought about it, oh, that's a pretty good question in a way. But then, because I'm on the appeals committee and we're talking about the rules, I thought, better look at the rules and now you and brought the rules are. here yeah <laughs> so 
I looked at the rules. And uh, it's Appendix A. There's a special appendix in the rules for, for, for rapid chess. And I'll just read the, the relevant point. There's more, but the relevant point, which is, if the opponent does not claim the win and the arbiter does not intervene. Now, the arbiter didn't see what happened, so he could not intervene. So this is what happened. The illegal move shall stand, which means the illegal move is, if you like, legal. And then it says, and the game shall continue. So if you think about what Inarchiev was saying, he was more or less saying, well, look, after I give check to Magnus in a position when I'm in check, and he, in that position, I'm saying his only legal move is to claim the game. Any other move he makes is illegal. But I think the meaning of the, of the words here, and the game shall continue, is pretty clear. And also, if you think about it, you know, th things could get pretty chaotic if every time uh, your opponent um, uh, 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 checked you, you could, you could check them back and if they missed it, then you could claim the game. I mean, imagine in any position when you're a queen down or something, you know, your opponent checks you and you think, oh, okay, I'll tell you what, I'll check him and see if he notices it, you know. So I think then it's chance for the other for those who would like to do tricks. Yeah, I mean anarchy, really. You know, it would be you know, uh, well, not anarchy in the UK as they used to say in the Sex Pistols, but anarchy everywhere, right? So, we've ruled against Inarchiev, and we'll publish the full uh, the full ruling later. But uh, I'm 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 pretty happy with the decision. I think it's right. But you know, uh, the, the players have to give five hundred dollars when they make an appeal. But it's clear, it's clear to the committee that Inokiev should not have to pay anything. Because actually, it's a very interesting claim. You yes, know? yes, I mean, he decided to go far and to check, yeah. actually, the opinion of the appeal committee. Yeah, and I, I, I think it was a very interesting claim. And maybe, actually, the rules should be made a little, should be redrafted just a little bit. It would be a bit more explicit on all these different situations, perhaps. Yeah, I think, it, I think it's a good suggestion for the Arbiters Commission for the future, maybe. And uh, what else can you say about Saudi Arabia? Did you have a chance to see something in Riyadh? And uh, what do you think about organization, I mean, the hotels, venue? Yeah, I mean, no, no, I mean all the organization's been, been fantastic. It was a great concert last night. Uh, it was very, I'd, I'd, I'd never heard this. Uh, I'd heard of the, uh, uh, of the, uh, of the composer and, and the performer, but I'd never, never seen him. It was also interesting to, to see how the locals really loved him. I mean, he must be, he's a huge star here. I understand. I heard that he is. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the, someone told me that when he had a concert here, the tickets sold out in an hour wow. or something like that. So, you know, no, everything I think has been, been, been great here uh, and the players seem to be enjoying it. And we're also getting some incredible games. I mean, I just wandered into one round, the ninth round, and I saw th just when I was looking probably there for about five or six minutes, I saw three incredible things, you know, on the board. So, you know, I think there's no shortage of good chess. Yeah, it's also nice to, to see all, all this section here. Thank you so much, Malcolm. Okay. All the best with your job. <laughs> yes, <laughs> see well, you maybe next time. Hopefully you won't have any more to do, but you never know, right? But otherwise, yeah. I will ask you again to give us a, a comment. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay.